Uh, really appreciate you coming out. So like you said, my name is Will and I'm from physical therapy department. Uh, Kristen perfectly summed up the challenges of working with patients under isolation precautions. Um, I just recently completed a rotation at a skilled nursing facility where I treated a patient who had post polio syndrome and um, he was also under isolation precautions for C. diff and I will talk about that in a couple minutes. Uh, the purpose of my case report was to describe some sort of uh, aerobic exercise, um, submaximally aerobic exercise that will help to improve lower extremity strength and in turn improve ambulation in a patient with post polio syndrome. Just to give you a little bit of background about polio, uh, polio is a, a virus and a, an infection of um, the anterior spinal cord. Uh, it leads to asymmetrical muscle weakness or paralysis. Uh, this was a rampant epidemic up until about the 1950s when the vaccine was actually introduced. Um, about 80% of patients who have survived polio, uh, they go on to complain of new onset of muscle weakness, fatigue, joint pain, um, or any other kind of symptoms along those lines, and, and we kind of refer to that nowadays as, as post-polio syndrome. Uh, the World Health Organization says that there's approximately a little over 12 million people in the world who actually suffer from post-polio syndrome. Impact of disability is huge for these patients. Like I alluded to a minute ago, they have impaired activities of daily living, impaired balance, impaired gait, oftentimes decreased activity, activity tolerance, as well as um, severe muscle atrophy. Uh, all of these combined form this post-polio syndrome and uh, can increase dramatically at fall risk, especially in the older adult population. The benefits of PT are really vast, as Christine, or Kristen sorry, had mentioned. Uh, my wife's name's Christine. <laughs> um, as uh, Kristen had so wonderfully mentioned, um, you know, isolation, we have a really big responsibility for these patients. And so patients who have post polio syndrome, we can really reverse the effects. We can help with uh, increasing their levels of muscle endurance, increasing their strength, and decreasing related fatigue. So my hypothesis for my case report was that I could implement a lower extremity strengthening type exercise and it would improve uh, gait and balance in my patient with post polio syndrome. Uh, specifically, the patient was a 92 year old male. Uh, he was admitted to the skilled nursing facility after a fall. Prior to admission, he was independent in all bed mobility transfers, ambulated without an assistive device. Uh, right off the bat, at the initial eval, he complained of zero out of 10 pain, and um, I performed a mini mental state exam on him, and he scored a 23 out of a 30, indicating a mild cognitive impairment. Uh, as far as the patient presentation, he had severe lower extremity weakness. Uh, this lower extremity weakness was mostly seen in his right leg. Um, however, he was also completely dependent on all bed mobility transfers. He was unable to stand on his own and he could only walk about five feet uh, and he required max assist from uh, me, the therapist, to do so. Uh, as far as the intervention, I prescribed an exercise plan for him that consisted of 50 minute treatment sessions at a frequency of five times a week for a period of six weeks. And uh, as Kristen alluded to, isolation precautions for C. diff uh, meant that every treatment had to stay within this patient's room. And unfortunately, he was on isolation precautions for the entire six weeks, uh, which was really detrimental. Um, it had its pros and cons. Uh, to start with the cons, it made progression very difficult. Uh, a lot of his goals involved working on transferring in and out of a car, working on stair negotiation, working on improving long distance ambulation, which all three are very difficult to do within the actual setting of uh, being confined in his room. Um, the first week I did a lot of uh, bed mobility and transfer type exercises with him and uh, after that it really focused on lower extremity strengthening. So we had to work a lot on uh, breaking the component of transfers into, into little parts. So we would work on sitting to stand from various heights, various surfaces. We would work on elevated uh, hospital bed. We'd lower that and make it a little bit more challenging. We would work on sit to stands from the wheelchair, from the bedside chair, as well as on and off of a toilet. 
Um, one of the most significant things that I think that we accomplished in there, instead of bringing our patient to the stairs, I decided to bring stairs to the patient. So I brought in a series of these boxes and they range from two to five to seven inches. And um, this was a really great way for us to practice the actual component of stair negotiation while we were under isolation precautions. One thing that the research is very clear on is keeping exercise for these patients at a submax level. Uh, submax is defined on the Borg RPE scale of about a 13 is what they like for patients who have post polio syndrome. Uh, I would use this scale a lot for the patient. I had this printed and I would show it to them with every activity that we were doing. And so if, if we were working on an activity and I said, hey, what's your intensity level? And he was like, uh, maybe eight or nine. I was like, okay, we need to bump it up a little bit. We want you around the 13. Um, and on the inverse side, if we were at a 15 or 16, I would you know, say, all right, we need to sit down. We need to take a little break for a minute. So this chart has a lot on it. Uh, this is a, a couple examples of some of the exercises that I performed with this patient from week to week and the progression that uh, the patient showed. Um, I would like to point out the bottom three real quick. I know that I kind of already talked a little bit about the step ups and I even alluded to the sit to stands. Um, but with the sit to stand and the mini squats, I'd like to point out week four, how we incorporated uh, into our treatment session uh, a piece of blue foam underneath the patient's feet. By putting the blue foam under the patient's feet, it really um, disturbed his base of support. And so by doing so, uh, he was also working on balance. So we were working on balance as well as increasing lower extremity strength through the sit to stands as well as the mini squats. Research is also not very clear on the proper outcomes to use for patients with post polio syndrome. Um, and even more so than that, the research doesn't have a whole lot in it with patients who are above the 90 year old range as well. So I decided to choose quite a good bit of outcomes to try to measure the amount of progress uh, that, that I was seeing with our patient. And um, just to kind of track change over time, I decided to choose the five time sit to stand test to measure muscle strength. I used the six minute walk test for muscle endurance. Um, I used the timed up and go for functional mobility. I used the Tinetti for gait and for balance. And I, then I used the Berg balance, obviously for balance. Uh, each outcome was completed at initial eval and uh, at the end of each week following, as well as at discharge. And I just want to point out the one of the more significant ones that I would like to bring your attention to is underlined. It's the tug scores. For some reason, I'm not sure why, uh, he did better at week three and four on the tug as compared to any other week uh, during that test. Um, but I'd also like to point out with the first two, the six minute walk test and the five times sit to stand made unbelievable improvements from initial eval being either max assist or unable to the very end at discharge. He was walking 195 feet um, and then the five times sit to stand was at 48 seconds, uh, both of which are significant improvements for him. But if you compare it to the literature, he still falls within the high fall risk category for each. Um, but important to note, the bottom two, the Tinetti and the Berg, it was very obvious that he has made substantial improvements uh, based on our interventions. He was unable to complete both of the tasks at uh, the initial evaluation and then at week six, at his discharge, he was a 21 out of 28 for the Tinetti and a 34 out of 56 for the Berg, uh, both of which indicate a moderate fall risk, but much improvement from not being able to do it at all. Uh, just in comparing the manual muscle test from initial evaluation to halfway through with our treatment and at discharge, uh, at initial evaluation, it's important to note that he showed mostly twos and a couple of threes out of five. So he was very, very weak on, bilaterally. Uh, with his initial eval manual muscle test. At uh, midway point and at discharge, he substantially increased in each area of his strength. The only one to note special attention to is the knee extension on the right remained the same, a two out of five throughout the entire duration of the treatment. So by discharge, uh, the patient was certainly showing improved uh, strength in his lower extremities. He was walking with a increased cadence uh, he was more safe in his ambulation. He had improved balance. He uh, increased his distance. He was able to walk and had better activity tolerance. 
Uh, but more so than that, one of the most meaningful components for our patient was that uh, there was less assistance needed for transfers, which was a huge uh, issue for him um, in transitioning into his home life. As a result, I feel that my hypothesis was correct. I feel that the patient definitely uh, improved on ambulation and balance through the use of a lower extremity strengthening exercise. Um, as with any patient population, it's, it's very important to, to set goals based on the patient's own desires. Have the patient be a complete part of your treatment, uh, make the task relevant and uh, meaningful, um, but at the same time, you really need to focus on your patient's impairments and um, for post-polio in particular, keep the exercises submax. Um, I've already mentioned the isolation limitation as well as the outcome measures and the lack thereof in literature. Um, decreased muscle endurance, decreased muscle strength are normal parts of the aging process and so I think that uh, as a 92 year old that's something that I certainly had to deal with and struggle with over the six week period of time. Uh, the patient also ambulated without an assistive device coming into the skilled nursing facility and uh, within there I had to teach him how to use a rolling walker and uh, we used that throughout each of our treatment sessions. The rolling ro walker was very good. It served as a pro because it, it gave him a, a new base of support and gave him extra stability while, while walking and while standing. However, being on isolation precautions, he had to navigate a tiny little room at the SNF with this walker and it was very difficult for him and led to a lot of energy expenditure. But other than that, these are my references. Do you guys have any questions? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it, uh, he was he was such a cute little 92 year old man, and he just he kept asking. He's like, "When can I go downstairs? When can we, you know, when can we practice getting in and out of the car?" And it is so hard because it's. I mean, those were his main goals, and you can't just bring a car up to his room. You know, I mean, we had one down in the in the facility, but we couldn't even get permission to take him down there because of the isolation precautions. And so it was, it was very challenging. And I mean, I can't even imagine being in one room for six weeks and not seeing the outside and not talking to other people. Um, so it was very difficult for sure. Yes. Was this the first time he was um, presenting with symptoms of post-polio being 92? So or had he had prior? He had, he had prior symptoms, but it was this new onset of severe muscle weakness that, that uh, we believe triggered the fall, uh, and he believes as well. And his family had noticed that he was increasingly having difficulties with his balance and with his gait, uh, so it was, it was fairly new for him. But prior to the fall, he was completely independent yes. with everything? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, ma'am. So I, I definitely think that uh, the outcome measures were good, the ones that I used, because even during the treatment time, a, a lot of times they took longer than expected, especially with, you know, say the Berg, for example. Uh, it took longer than expected, but it was good because it, it allowed me to really focus on a couple of the key components of it that he was having difficulty with, and it actually ended up being mostly part of our treatment session. Because uh, we did, you know, it wasn't all lower extremity strengthening. We worked a lot on balance and, and mobility as well. Um, I, I don't think I would necessarily change any of them. I, I really, I tried to tackle each area that he truly had a deficit in, where if it was mobility, if it was strength, if it was endurance, whatever it may be, I, I feel like I tried to get one outcome measure that encompassed all of that. So the, I'd say the most challenging part was finding a time during the week to space these out so that fatigue didn't play a role in the actual assessment of the outcome measures. And typically they were done on Thursday and Friday with this patient. Yes, ma'am. Well, I've run the six minute walk hundreds of times in my very long career. I've never done it in a room. Oh my gosh. It, <laughs> it, is, it is rough. So I, I can tell you that the first 10 minutes of my treatment is moving junk out of the way. And, 
blood pressure, coughs. And because being under isolation precaution, whatever you bring in his room stays there. And so there's so much stuff in there and I would get so frustrated with the nurses. So I'd have to set up the room and literally we would do a loop. We had a perfectly marked off area and we would walk to his door, we'd make a circle and come back. And so the hardest part was every time he got to the end, which was after like 10 steps, <laughs> he would have to navigate this walker safely. And it, I mean, it, it was a challenge for sure. So. You should try it sometime. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, so uh, that was actually one component of my paper that I didn't mention in my presentation. Uh, he, we were unsuccessful with the uh, orthotic together. I got him an AFO uh, just to try out to see if it would help. He had severe uh, hyperextension, genio recurvatum. Um, it was not working out. The, the AFO, I mean, he would completely power against it. And it was all we had in the clinic at the time. And his family had said that they had tried many other different knee braces or foot orthotics for him, and it never worked. And um, they said he's comfortable with it. He's learned to walk this way. So if you could help him the best way you can, I said, OK. But it definitely looked painful. But he never complained of pain. Any more questions? All right, thank you. Thank you.